What we see on the screen now is where we left the last tutorial. The writing looks great, it's proportionally spaced, it's got shadowing, but it doesn't stand out very much. So we're looking at ways to enhance that. We're going to do a few techniques and see how we can make it look. But first of all, if you recall, we changed from fixed spacing for the font to proportional spacing. But some games, such as old arcade games, would like to display their scores as a fixed font. It adds authenticity. So instead of just removing that, we should actually add the option to have a fixed font. So we're going to add a new variable and we're going to call it text.proportional question mark because it's true or false and it's for all sprites. Usually I think we'll want this on, so we'll set as a default, we'll set text proportional, this is in the initialize block, text proportional to true. And all that we use this for, it changed how um, much we change the X when measuring the font, so we'll have if the, if the proportional setting is true, then we'll change it by that much as we are currently doing. And if it's false, we will just change the X. by font width time scale as we were originally doing and likewise down here where we're actually displaying the font we'll have something very similar so I'll just copy this block get rid of that and so I'll put this in here change the X in there and I'm going to also put that block in there so instead of changing the variable I'm actually changing the X coordinate actually that one won't change at all because that is a proportional one this one will be changing by font width time scale. So if I'm using a proportional font, then I'll change the position of the sprite or the stamp by the proportional amount, otherwise I'll just change it by the fixed amount and I'll remove that part. And so now if I run it normally, it, it looks exactly the same. But I now have the option of disabling proportional font. So if I text proportional to false, then it should give me more of an old fashioned arcade look. There we go. And that's what you want in an arcade game to display score. It doesn't look so good in a long text description, but it's a useful option to have. So now I've done that. I'm going to look at a way of enhancing that text to make it stand out more. And how I'm going to do that is to display a darkness in the background that just tints the picture behind it a darker colour. So you can still see the picture through it, but it'll, it'll let the text stand out. So I'm going to add a new custom block. I'm going to call it draw background line and it's going to run without screen refresh and behind every line of text I just make this a little bit larger behind every line of text it's going to draw a semi-transparent darker line so the, the text will stand out more but you'll still be able to see the picture so to do this I'm going to select the endmarker.costume. The reason for that is simply because 
unlike all the other costumes, it's actually centered right in the middle there, which is very useful for this. So I'll switch the costume to that. And then I'm going to draw lots of lines across the screen moving down. And I know how, how tall the font is, it's font height times scale. So that's how many times I'm going to repeat. Repeat. Font height times scale, which is the height of the font on the screen. I'm going to move the pen to the left hand side, which is setting x to variables to text top left. I'm going to put the pen down and set X to the right hand side so it's going to draw a, little, a thin line across the screen. Set X to text top right and then lift the pen back up again. Of course I'll also need to set the size and colour of the pen. The size is just going to be one pixel as it's drawing lines across the screen. The colour is going to be a semi-transparent dark colour. So when I've finished drawing those lines across, draw a line across, I'm going to move the pen down by a pixel so that it's doing a block behind the entire line of font. When it's got to the end, I'll set the X back to the left hand side. And I'll move the pen position back up again so it'll be back where it started. So change Y. It's moved down this many pixels, it wants to move back up that many pixels. And that code will draw a line. I need to set the colour, I need to set the size. I'll do that over here in display text. I will set the pen size to one, as I said, which is here. So pen size. And the colour. Now, as I said, it's going to be a semi-transparent colour. And the way to do this, I'm going to make a variable. I'm going to call it background colour. And it's for this sprite only. And I'm going to set that up. Set the background colour to... Now this is an interesting bit. It's actually easy to work in hexadecimal on this. So if you know hexadecimal, great. If you don't, don't worry about it. But the actual number is going to be... I don't need a join. It's going to be naught times, which means hexadecimal. Now the first two digits are how transparent it's going to be. 40, so it's going to be not that transparent. I should be able to see through it. And I'm going to set the red, green and blue components of the colour to zero. So it's black. It's a semi-transparent black colour. It doesn't matter about this right now. Um, just know what we're doing is setting a semi-transparent colour to the background pen. So I'm going to set the pen colour and I'm going to set it to that variable background colour. There we go. Now I'm going to want to draw a line behind the text right at the beginning before I start. As I know the text is going to be on top of there. And every time I move down to a new line, I want to draw another background line behind it for the next line down. So let's see what this looks like. Can you see that? It's just tinted the screen slightly darker, which just helps the font to stand out more. Again, I'll 
I'll make this so it can be turned on or off. And I'll call the variable text.background. So let's make a variable for all sprites called text.background with a question mark because it's true or false. And I'm going to, in the initialize block, set text.background to true. No, to false, because normally you'd, you'd not want it to show a background. So by default, we'll have it off. And then in the draw background line, I only need to do any of this code if we've set the background to true. So if text background is true, then we'll draw the tinted background behind it. And so on full screen, the defaults is off. You can see it there with the tint on from before, if I run it again. And the text doesn't stand out anywhere near as much with the background turned off. So that's a useful feature to have. We'll check it for drawing the text in a smaller box. So if we do it slightly higher up the screen at minus 20 and we'll set a left hand side and a right hand side now. So set text left to minus 180 and we'll set text right to 180 just so we can see this in action. We've got the shadow on. Do it full screen, let's see how that looks. shadow is off. And now the shadow, text shadow is true, so it should have displayed a shadow. Clearly hasn't. Text not shadow. Shadow is the shadowing behind the letters. Getting my own variables mixed up here. Text of background to true. There we go, a nice border just around the text box. I'm going to try making it slightly darker just by tweaking this value from 40, make it slightly bigger to 60. It's just made that a little bit darker, makes the text stand out. You can't see the shadowing quite as much because the backgrounds are blacker. But there we have it. We can now display a font, we can display it proportionally spaced, we can display it non-proportionally spaced, we can set the margin to the left and the right and the position, we can add shadowing, we can add a background. We have a very flexible font system. You can use this in any of your projects. All the code is in that text sprite and so if you simply open your backpack, I'll just empty my backpack, then I can drag that sprite into there and from there you can drag that sprite into any of your projects and from that point you can straight away add a pen font to any of your projects. There's room for some improvements. You could make it so you can change the colour of the font. That would be quite simple to do. Uh, you can make different ways of the font appearing. You could have one that appeared like a typewriter where it gradually appeared. You can play around with it as much as you want. The basics are all there already to be used in any project that you want a font in.